up and a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let us tune our hearts and minds to prayer. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that we come. Lord, thank you for another opportunity you, to be in the house of worship one more time, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for our rising and our coming, oh God, and for you being with us throughout this week, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done and everything that you're going to do. Lord God, we thank you for life, health, and strength, Lord God. We thank you for the healing that has been happening with those that individuals have been in the hospital, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for all that you show us and all that we, all that you do for us, oh God. And Lord, we just praise your name, oh God. We just bless your name, oh God, on today. Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that you would bless every person that is on their way to service, oh God, no matter what, what church they're going to on today, Lord God. We pray for the preached word, oh God, on today, that a word, would, a rhema word would minister to your people, Lord God. And as the pastor said on Wednesday, Lord, we pray that as we're, as we're, we're in, in the time of Lent, in the time of reflection, yes, a time of, um, of retracing our hearts back to the place of worship, the place of where we accepted Jesus Christ, yes. that we would leave, that we would let go of and eliminate negative thoughts, Lord God. And that we would, as the scripture says in Isaiah 26 and 3, that we would put our minds on you. Yes. That which should stay, and thou will keep me in perfect peace, whose mind and heart is stayed on thee, Lord God. And we just ask right now, Lord, that as we enter into this worship yes, experience, Lord. oh God, that we would lay our, cast our cares on at your feet, oh God, that because you care for us, oh God, and that we will be able to worship today with a spirit of liberty, with a spirit of truth. You said, let, let us come to the house of worship and worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. And God, we just thank you, Lord God, for how you're going to move in thank today's you, service. Jesus. We just thank, thank you Lord. for how you're going to bless thank in you, today's Lord. service. Hallelujah. We just thank you how you're going to heal yes, in today's Lord. service. Yes, we just thank you for how you're going to deliver yes, in today's Lord. service. And it's in Jesus' mighty, matchless Hallelujah. name that we pray and we have the victory over all things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we clap our hands for Jesus? Thank you, amen. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the things I want us to start doing, when, when, when the pastor asks us to clap or the worship team invites you to, to clap, that we would, we would really clap and get, because it's a praise, it's a worship that yes, we, give, we give to God. And in Job, it talks about when the heaviness and when there was a spirit in the place that... When, when men clap their hand, it hisses the enemy out of the place. Sometimes, as the pastor was, was exhorting on Wednesday night, we allow uh, things and, and things to hinder us uh, in spirit because we're focused on everything else. So when right now we're asking that we, you come and you focus your minds on getting a, a blessing on today, to getting, giving God the glory on today. Hallelujah. And, the song, and as we're coming up to the weeks coming leading up to Easter, the psalmist recorded, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad that you came in our lives. I'm so glad that you came to save us. And see, Jesus, he came from heaven to earth to show us from the grave. He came to yes. show us. Hallelujah. He came to show us by him going to the grave, going down, Hallelujah. go guard yes, the hill, Lord. that Hallelujah. we could have life and that we could have life more abundantly. Amen. Can we give God a praise for that with our hands? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Yes, Hallelujah. I'm so glad you came to save us. Levites. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. 
Lord, I love to sing your praise. How many are glad he's in your life? I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the earth to the cross, my dead. From the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I live your name. Oh, Lord, you came from heaven. You came from heaven to show us the way. From the earth to the cross, my dead. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name. Oh, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the my death. My death. I'm glad he did it. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name. Oh, you came from heaven to earth. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name. Oh, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My God, you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name. Oh, one more time. You came from heaven to earth. Because you came from heaven Thank you, to Jesus. earth to show us yeah. the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Lord. You said in your word that no one could come to the Father unless they come through you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So we lift your name. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. We make it big. We make it great Thank you, Jesus. in the building. Thank you, Lord. And in these words you said, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, pure and holy, yes, Lord. tried and true, yes, yes, yes. Yes. With, with a 
is giving. Lord, I'll be a living sanctuary. Lord, for you. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. How many want to be a living? I'll be a Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord, for you. Lord, for you. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Pure and holy. Try the truth. True. Try and true. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. I'll be a living. I'll be a living. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord for you. Lord for you. Lord appoint. Lord, appoint me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living, I'll be Anoint me. Lord, anoint me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Try the true. true. Try and true. Come on, do it with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. I'll be a living. I'll be a living sanctuary, sanctuary, Lord for you, Lord for you, Lord prepare, Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary. I'll do it with your whole heart. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living. I'll be a living sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord for you, Lord for you, Lord for you. Lord, prepare. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary. heart, your whole spirit. With thanksgiving. All right, hallelujah. I'll be a living sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord, for you. One more time. Lord, anoint me. Lord, anoint me to be a sanctuary. 
the oil that was running down Aaron's beard. Pure and holy, true right and true, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living. I'll be a living sanctuary. Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Lord, for you. For the Bible says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. For at the same time, pray for us as well, for God will open to us a door for the word, that we may declare the mystery of Christ, for which I am in prison, so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Oh, conduct yourselves wisely toward outside and make the most of the time and let your speech always be gracious seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone the bible says devote yourselves to prayer devote yourselves to prayer let us pray Dear gracious and eternal God, we are here in your house. We are here in your temple. Lord, before we do anything else, we come to you in prayer. Lord, we pray over this sanctuary. We pray over this worship service. Lord, we pray over this choir, over these musicians, Lord. Lord, we pray over all the congregants who have gathered here today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Oh, we are setting an atmosphere. We are setting an atmosphere of praise, setting an atmosphere of worship. For Lord, we come here to worship you and worship you alone. Oh Lord, we love you. Oh Lord, we magnify you. For it's in his name we say amen. Give it up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, from whom all things, oh, you can do better than that because he's done more than that. You can do better than that because he's done more than that. Oh, we serve an awesome God. We serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. Oh, in the name, give him praise. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him in the midnight hour. But whatsoever you do, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it up one more time for our praise team this morning, for our praise team in the name of Jesus. Oh, we are here. We are here to praise and worship. For the Bible says, let everything Everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. So if I'm not mistaken, everything that's alive in this church this morning has breath. So we should be praising the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Well, my brothers and sisters, I welcome you to this place. I welcome you to this house. I welcome you to this temple. Oh, this blessed and holy ground where we are here to worship the Lord. For this is New Hope CME Church. New Hope CME Church at the corner of Gray and Emerson in Evanston, Illinois. On the west side, which is the best side in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank God. We thank God for 103 years. 103 years of ministry in the name of Jesus right here in this community producing so many great witnesses producing so many wonderful saints who have come in and out of these doors producing so many great ministers and preachers and bishops alike who have gone across this connection gone across this land spreading the good news right here 
starting right here at New Hope CME Church in the name of Jesus. New Hope, I want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. All over the internet and all over Facebook, I tell you all the time and I'll continue to tell you, there are those who are looking at New Hope. There are those who are marveling at New Hope and all the wonderful things that are going on here at this church and in this ministry. There are those who are proud to raise the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ and continue to support New Hope. Some of you have no idea who is actually praying for New Hope every day. Some of you have no idea who's supporting New Hope every day because there are those who still believe in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. There are those who still believe that this ministry still has a voice. There are those who still believe that we still have a purpose in this community. Be encouraged, New Hope. Be encouraged. For we are doing the work of the Lord. And for this we shall be proud. We welcome all members, friends, and special guests into this place, both in the house and online. If you are watching us right now via live stream, it means you have found our website at newhopecmechurch.com, newhopecmechurch.com in the name of Jesus. Oh, we welcome you to matriculate our website. We welcome you to navigate our beautiful page and find out who we are and whose we are and what we're about and what we have done. But we also welcome you to our online giving tab, our online giving donation link that allows you to sow a seed into this ministry. For we are telling you right now, we cannot do the work that God has asked us to do without your help. So we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for what you've done and what you're going to do. Oh, we thank you. We praise you. As I look out into the congregation, we are all family in the name of Jesus. Easter is with us this morning. Hello, Easter. Praise the Lord. Amen. She works so hard with her clients week in and week out. So we thank God that her schedule allowed her to join us today. Praise the Lord. I'm going to make a request from uh, the pulpit. Pastor Hayward is with us this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Pastor Hayward, at the time of the morning prayer, I'm going to bring you a microphone and you pray from where you are. Would that be all right? Praise the Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters, let us look. Let us look at our morning bulletin this morning. Yes, yes, yes. It's what I do. Boy, these musicians, they be playing with me. Oh, they know how to get me. Because praise is what I do. Let us pause for station identification. Because the Holy Spirit is trying to remind us about prayer. The Holy Spirit is trying to remind us about praise. The Holy Spirit is asking you right now, what do you do? What do you do when you come to church? Do you come to sit? Do you come to watch? Or do you come to praise the Lord? The songwriter said what? Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. You have to ask yourself, what do you do? What do you do when you get up? What do you do when you lay down at night? What do you do? What do you do? Praise. Praise. Oh, praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new day. Praise him in the midnight hour. Oh, praise him. Praise. 
praise him. Praise him. Just lift your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, don't you know we love you? Don't you know we magnify you? Don't you know we thank you? We praise you, Lord, because you've been so good. We praise you, Lord, because you've been so awesome. We praise you, Lord, because I shouldn't be here right now. We praise you, Lord, because I should have been dead and gone. We praise you, Lord, because you protected my children. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. When I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills, when I didn't know how I was going to get back and forth to work, when I didn't know how I was going to wake up in the morning, when I didn't know what clothes I was going to put on my back, when I didn't know if I was going to have a roof over my head, Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. It's all right. It's all right. What I do. Praise is what I do. Oh, praise him. Everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet one last time. Oh, praise him. Praise him. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God together, for it is written... I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Oh, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of his word? Hath not God made the foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Hallelujah. Oh, another praise break, another praise break for our Lord. Yes, Lord. To save them that believe in the name of Jesus. Oh, I hear my praise. I hear my praise this morning. It's all oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Hymn number 10. Hymn number 10. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, it sounds. Oh, the greatest. Oh, do you love him? Oh, do you love him? Oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Oh, I love him. Oh, it tells me. Oh, who died to set me free. Oh, it tells me. 
Oh, the sin is perfect, please. Oh, how? How? Oh, in the name. Verse 4. Oh, it tells of one whose loving heart Verse 4, who in sorrow Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love him. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Oh, I love him. I love him. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Do you love him? Do you love him? Oh, how I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Hey, Roman. Will Smith, you, uh, look, look, David DuPont, he's way ahead of me. Will Smith said, get jiggy with it, huh? Nah, 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 nah. Get jiggy with it. Oh, I love him. Jesus makes me get jiggy with it. Do you love him? Hey! It is now time for our affirmation of faith, which can be found in multiple sources within this sanctuary. New Hope members, friends, and special guests, in whom and what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Let us pray. I heard the voice yes. of Jesus say, yes. Come on to me and rest. Yes. Lie down, thy wearied one, lie down, thy head upon my breast. Yes. I came to Jesus as I was, yes. wearied, wounded, and sad. I found in him a resting place, yes. and he has made me yes. glad. Yes. Most holy and eternal God, yes. Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the giver of very good and perfect gifts. Yes. Here we are once again, Lord, calling upon your name, yes. and we ask as often as we come into your holy presence, yes. we pray that you will grant us forgiveness yes. of our many sins yes. and blot us all of our transgressions and make us instrument of peace yes. in your hand. Yes. We come to you this morning yes. to tell you thank you. Amen. Thank you for this place of worship. Thank we thank you for our pastor. Amen. We thank you for New Hope yes. CME Church. We ask that you would come right now and drop a live coal amount us and burn up every base of all design and set our cold hearts on fire. Thank you for last night rest and for blessing us to see a new day. We ask you to bless this worship today. Bless every person that is on the sound 
of my voice. Yes. Bless our pastor. Yes. Let, help him to preach yes. your word of eternal truth. Yes. And after a while, we don't know when it's going to be, but we know our time will come. Yes. So we ask you to help us to so live and so love that when our time come, we will hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And bless us right now as we wait on you. Teach us how to love one another and to feel each other's care. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You brought us from a long way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You brought us when we couldn't bring ourselves, but we, you brought us anyway, and we thank you. Come and be with us in this worship. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hallelujah. Just prior to the voice of praise choir coming, I thank God for Pastor Hayward. I thank God for his presence, his wisdom, and his teaching. For he is a pastor wet behind the ears. Oh, and how grateful and how blessed we are to have a living legend amongst us. For he is a man who knows how to get a prayer through. He is a man who still has it. He is a man who's still preaching and teaching as if he never left New Hope. In the name of Jesus. We thank God for you, Pastor. We thank God for you. Receive you now the voices of praise choir in the name of Jesus as they continue to usher in the Holy Spirit. Oh, help them out. Help them out. In the name.
Hallelujah. Look where he's brought me from. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So glad he brought me up. So glad. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he brought you up? Aren't you glad? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm glad that he brought me up. I'm happy that he brought me up. I'm excited that he brought me up. I'm ecstatic that he brought me up. I'm overjoyed that he brought me up. I'm overwhelmed that he brought me up. Oh, I thank God that he brought me out. Hey, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. I got to move on, Roman. I got to move on. I got to move on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, it is now time for our responsive reading. Our responsive reading coming out of the book of Psalm out of the book of Psalm 19, find the King James Version of the Bible in this church, which should be readily available, and open up your Bibles to Psalm 19. Open up your Bible to Psalm 19. Follow the choir and stand in reverence for the Lord in the name of Jesus. As we read this psalm together, I shall read verse 1. We shall read verse 2 together and alternate all the way down to the end in its entirety. The heavens declare that the glory of God and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. O oh, the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. For the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. For the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, then much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. O oh, moreover, by them is thy servant worn, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse those means to secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the
Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For it now is time for the gospel. It's now time for the good news coming out of the book of John. Coming out of the book of John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22 in the name. I'll be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible on this morning. Again, John 2. John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Listen to and for the word of God. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves. Money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. For his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Oh, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he had raised from the dead his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that jesus had spoken this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be to our god and father and savior up above i wonder who in here loves the lord i wonder who in here loves the lord if anybody loves god say i love the lord I love the Lord. He's been so good to me. He's heard my cry. If you indeed love the Lord, then it is no problem for you to give back to God. If you indeed love the Lord and what you say is not lip service, then now it's time to put what? Put your money where your mouth is. Sometimes I got to get hood. Sometimes I got to get street. Sometimes I got to say something that people understand. It's time for you to put up or shut up. It's time for you to praise God both in spirit and in truth. It is now time to give back to the Lord. It is now time to sow a seed into the kingdom. It is now time for you to give a portion. It is now time for you to give a tenth. It is now time for you to give a tithe. It is now time for you to give back to the Lord and Father and Savior up above. As our officers make their way forward, as our officers make their way forward, God says, I've given you 100%. And all I'm asking you is for you to give back a small portion. If you love the Lord on today, show him, show him how much you love him in the name of Jesus. Follow the directions of our ushers coming from the outside aisles to the inside in the name of Jesus.
Oh, in the name. Put your hands together for our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is time for testimony. It is time for you. Watch this. Watch this. It's time for you to preach. Pastor Hayward knows better than me. There are some, some members who believe they can preach better than the pastor. Am I right about it? Yeah. Yeah. So all right then, <laughs> it's time for you to preach in the name of Jesus. I think that's a new ministry. Well, we got the sermon cipher. All right, look, look, let's see how the Holy Spirit is moving. So I think the next one, I think, yeah, 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 I got to tease this out. Yeah. Huh? So you think you can preach, right? And so instead of, so you think you can dance. So you think you can preach, huh? And I just may put myself up there and I'll call my other uh, promulgators of the gospel and these professional preachers and I'll, I'll pit professional preachers against amateur preachers. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, that's the new spin on the sermon cipher. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He just sent that. Praise the Lord. Is there a testimony? Is there a testimony on this morning? Praise the Lord, preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is just an awesome God. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness. You know, so many of us in our church family are battling something, illnesses of some sort. And I want to tell you, our Divas ministry this Friday was awesome. God showed up. This young woman was so knowledgeable. And out of that, Pastor, I'm going to speak to you afterwards about some of the plans that we have for a Women's Day and how that just came together out of us meeting on Friday. God is just an awesome God. And no matter where we are, no matter how much of us, even if it's one or two, God's Holy Spirit is going to show up and do the impossible. I just want to thank God for that this morning. Praise and praise and give it up for the divas. Give it up for the divas. And in a moment, we're going to pray for all of our sick and shut in and those who are, who are mending. So as we speak of the divas, we, we want to speak of one of, our, one of our divas who successfully made it through surgery. Am I right about it? She may be watching right now. We love you, Sister Betty Smith. Sister Betty Smith, in the name of Jesus. Then we have another diva, another warrior who is at the University of Chicago. Yes, Sister Renee Wright, if she's watching, we love you, Renee. We are in prayer. I encourage you to go see Miss Shans, go see Miss Smith, go see uh, Renee. They need your visits. Go see Miss Weldon. They need you right now. There are so many who say there's nothing I could do. We don't have any money. We're too small. No, 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 no. There's a lot that you can do. Yeah. And there are individuals, and Pastor Hayward said it best at his birthday celebration, don't forget him when he's not here. Don't forget him. You know where he lives, huh? He said it clearly. Now, he said, don't do me like that. Isn't that what you said? Praise the Lord. Don't do him and don't treat him that way and don't treat our others that way. And again, special prayer for Sister Renee Wright. If there are those who don't know, she is on the 1A list, the 1A list to receive a new heart, to receive a new heart. Her situation is serious. Her situation demands our attention and our prayer. Oh, how encouraged she would be if you all flooded her with phone calls. Her cell phone is still on. She's still texting and she's still receiving visitors in the name of Jesus. So reach out to her and pray with her. She will be at the University of Chicago indefinitely. 
and will not come home until she gets a new heart in the name of Jesus. Is there another testimony? Praise the Lord. Brother Heath, thank you, Reverend Gallimore. In the name of Jesus, let us recognize Brother Heath. Praise him. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that's come here at this place they call New Hope. Lord, I went and saw uh, Sister Renee, and, and there's 40 people in that unit waiting for the same thing that she's waiting for. But we know that you're faithful, Lord. We know you're faithful, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit's presence here in uh, Sunday School. Lord, I know they're online. I asked them, hey, you got your machines here? Come online and, and visit with us. Lord, I know they're there. Also, Lord, I know that my family is lining up to come with me on April 3rd. I'm praying that they pay their money, but they're lining up to come, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for that. I just thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Praise him. Thank you, Brother Heath. Thank you for that powerful witness and testimony. Thank you for that powerful witness and testimony. In the name of Jesus, we thank God and praise God. You know, I got my preacher with me. I got my preacher with me. In the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, out of the mouths of babes, out of the mouths of babes, in the name of Jesus. Rachel, what do you want to say to close out our praise and testimony? She's still the mic. I thank God for a good father and a good family. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, baby. She simply praised God for a good father and a good mother in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear. And we thank God for an awesome daughter. Huh? And another awesome daughter. Where's Junior at? There he is, hiding in the corner. Roman, you know he loves you, amen. Oh, he was doing mighty well on the drums uh, the other day, pretending to be you, Roman. Oh, yeah, doing the everything, or hitting all the drums and skins, amen. Praise God. Well, it is now time to approach the throne of grace. So many things that we need to pray for. So many things going on in this world and in this community. We should be reminded that our prayers shouldn't be selfish to just ourselves. Our prayers shouldn't just be local. Our prayers should be global. Our prayers should be international. Because whatever is going on in Syria affects us. Whatever is going on in Iraq affects us. Whatever is going on in Israel affects us. Whatever is going on in Africa affects us. The altar is open. The altar is open. For the Bible says... Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that I am Lord. In the name of Jesus, there's room at the altar. Come into prayer. Dear gracious and eternal God, we thank you, we love you, we praise you on today. For it is by no mistake, it is by no happenstance that your children have gathered here in the sanctuary on today for there are so many things to pray for. Lord, we could pray for ourselves all day long. But Lord, we're bending on our knees today praying for others. We're bending on our knees today in intercession for others. Others who are outside of our family others who are outside of our circle of influence. Lord, we send our prayers all over this world. Lord, we send our prayers from all four corners of this earth. Oh, Lord, you know where the need is, for the need is everywhere. Oh, Lord, we welcome the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome, not only in this place, but all over the world, Lord, for wherever the sun shall shine, the glory of the Lord is present. Wherever the sun shall set, 
the glory of the Lord is present. For the same God, the same God that blesses us here in these United States is the same God in Europe, the same God in Africa, the same God in Australia, the same God in Asia, the same God in all seven continents of this world. Oh Lord, we need you. We've come to realize that we're nothing without you. We've come to realize that the power is in prayer. The power is in prayer. The power is in praise and worship of you. The power is in putting you first before everything else. For the Bible says you can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens us. Oh Lord, we love you. Oh Lord, we worship you. Oh Lord, we magnify the holy name. Oh Lord, hear the prayers of the righteous. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Oh, hear our prayer, oh Lord. Hear us on today, Lord. Oh Lord, we love you. Oh Lord, we praise you. For it's in his name. In the name that comes above all names. For it's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, TV once again, the Voices of Praise Choir, the Voices of Praise Choir as they bring the sermonic selection. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place.
My brothers and sisters, there is a word from the Lord on today. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. 
Unbeknownst to you, part of this scripture has already been read. Unbeknownst to some of you, part of this scripture has already been read in the morning meditation in the opening worship of this service. We're going to rightly dissect this word here shortly. But here's what I want you to begin to think about. Your belief was sealed in the inexplicable, not the debatable. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your belief, your belief in God was sealed in the inexplicable, not the debatable. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Let the church say amen. amen. Or your belief, your belief. Where were you when you first believed? What happened to you when you began to believe? For God wants us to know your belief, your belief in God, your worship of Jesus Christ. Watch this. It wasn't set by somebody who told you. It wasn't set and sealed by somebody who did a lot of explanation. Your belief was sealed in what? The inexplicable. What's the inexplicable? The inexplicable are the miracles in life. The inexplicable are the things for which there is no understanding. But don't you know that throughout our lives, we come across individuals who know it all? Huh? Throughout our lives and on our jobs, in our homes and in our circles of friends there's always one who knows it all there's an article written by Jacqueline Smith eight tips for dealing with a know-it-all co-worker do you have one if you don't have one guess what you're the one Jacqueline says do you have a co-worker now, if you're retired or in between jobs, just change coworker to family member or friend. Do you have a coworker who thinks he knows everything? He believes he's the go-to person, the one with the special connections and authority. Oh, he acts as though he's been everywhere and has experienced everything. If there's a problem, he has the solution. If there's a question, he has the answer. He isn't open to new ideas or collaborating. And he has strong opinions which he delivers what? in a very obnoxious manner. Chances are you've never ever heard him utter the words, I don't know. Unfortunately, most employees encounter at least one know-it-all coworker or boss at some point in their career. 
And they're not always the easiest person to work with. They tend to monopolize conversations. I'm going to be coming down your street in a moment. They tend to dismiss input from others and make decisions without first considering all the facts. And a my way or the highway attitude often leads to unhappy co-workers. You ever been in an unhappy environment? The know-it-alls lead to disgruntled clients and an unhappy work environment. Andrew Rosen, founder and editor of Career Advice Block, says it can be extremely difficult to work with a know-it-all because they are generally poor listeners, often thinking about what they are going to say next. You've been in this conversation. Often thinking about what they are going to say next rather than hear what you are actually saying. Their mindset makes it hard to get through to them that their idea or solution might not be the best one. They have often already formed an opinion and will not be swayed. Michael Kerr, an international business speaker, says know-it-alls can be extremely frustrating to work with for a number of reasons. One, they tend to speak more than they listen. So people can be left with the feeling that their opinions or ideas haven't been given a proper hearing. They can often be closed-minded as well. I'm going somewhere with this which means they can become a severe impediment to the creative, watch this Holy Ghost, to the spiritual process, to the faith process, to the biblical process, to the theological process by blocking any idea other than their own. They simply know an idea will or won't work. Some know-it-alls can come across as opinionated, aggressive, brusque, and even loud. All traits that won't win over a lot of people at the office and in fact, can be easily construed as bullying behavior. What do you do with a know-it-all? What, what do you do, watch it first lady, what do you do with a blowhard? What do you do with somebody who's so heady I'm glad you asked. Number one, be empathetic. This coworker may irritate you, but remember that his or her know-it-all attitude is probably stemming from a confidence issue or some deeper personal issue. Rather than get angry, allow yourself to be empathetic. Your belief was sealed in the inexplicable, not the debatable. Number two, pick your battles. Number three, lead by example. Number four, be armed with your own facts. It's often said, when you give testimony, when you speak about Jesus, you shouldn't speak about your mama's Jesus. You shouldn't speak about your daddy's Jesus. You should give up and talk about your Jesus. Be armed with your own facts. 
Keep your sense of humor about you. Ask probing questions. Take the person aside and offer constructive feedback on their behavior. And watch this. Avoid involving your boss. Look where I'm pointing. Avoid involving your boss unless what? The know-it-all is truly threatening your success. My brothers and sisters, your belief was sealed in the inexplicable. Your belief was sealed in your faith in God. Your belief was sealed because he saved you. Your belief was sealed by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, not by some blowhard, not by some know-it-all, not by some goody-two-shoe, not by somebody who thinks they know more than you. Look at 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. If you don't believe in the cross, if you don't believe in the power of the resurrection, then all you see is some crazy radical prophet who was nailed to a tree for nothing. But the Bible says the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, to those who choose to perish, to those who've chosen to give up, to those who see no hope and no future. But to us, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Watch out those who think they know it all. Watch out to those who always have to have the last word. For I will destroy the wisdom of the wife and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Oh, I love God. God is a G. God is the original G. God is G. God is God. God is bigger than any gangster you could ever put before him. And here in the word of God, he's calling you out. He is saying, where is the one who is so wise? Where is the scribe? Where is that great debater of all this age? The one that loves to hear their voice. The one who always has to argue. Did you hear what I said? Argue. May my mother rest in peace. She was from the South and she always had trouble saying certain words. She never said, boy, why are you arguing with me? She says, why did you come here to argue? God is saying, where is that the better of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, here's your key word and phrase. The world did not know God through wisdom. Oh, you're not understanding what I'm saying. The world did not know God through wisdom. If anybody's ever heard me preach before, and I know you have. Reverend Gallimore can attest to what I'm about to say. Seminary is good and all, but my, 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 some of the most nonsensical 
conversations and debates occur within those holy consecrated walls that they call seminary. There are those who wish to enter into these debates. There are those who wish to pursue PhDs and write dissertations and be published on nonsensical questions that have nothing to do with my faith. For the world did not know God through wisdom. It is often said that before you go to seminary, you got to bring Jesus with you. You can't meet Jesus at seminary. You got to have Jesus with you. You have to have had an experience with Jesus. You had to have had a miraculous moment in your life. Because the world, I don't care how many books, I don't care how many movies have been written, I don't care what they say, the world did not know God through wisdom. So God decided through the foolishness of our own proclamation to save those who believe. I wonder who in here believes on today. I wonder who in here believes on today. There's a young lady by the name of Morgan Lake. Morgan Lake of Dunkirk, Maryland is a vibrant and enthusiastic young woman. The 22-year-old college student is majoring in communications. She dreams of becoming a sports anchor or host of a television show. Morgan also teaches gymnastics and cheerleading to young girls. Morgan is the kind of young woman that makes people feel good about life. You ever met somebody like that? She always seeks to provide people with encouragement and inspiration. That's how Morgan lives her life. Loving God and loving people. But on a Friday, on a Friday in the month of July, in the year of 2013, at about 8 o'clock at night, Morgan was enjoying one of her best days ever. Everything was just going her way. You ever had a day like that? Everything is going, every, huh, Vic? You're hitting all categories, Doc. Your pipeline is full, right, Vic? Your clients are calling in, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. Everything was going her way. It is all a day that she will never forget. But early, early in the evening, along the Chesapeake Bay can be a wonderful time of day, especially when the sun is just beginning to set. It's simply beautiful. As Morgan was driving across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, she was feeling the euphoria of having one of those spectacular moments in time. There's a car commercial that's currently playing on TV and uh, the woman is singing and she doesn't realize that her colleagues are listening to her through her Bluetooth. Am I right about it? We all have had days like that where you get caught up in the spectacular of the moment. But then suddenly, calamity struck. It all happened in an instant. It all happened in the blink of an eye. But it felt like an eternity. Morgan has slowed her car to a stop on the bridge for a toll. In her rearview mirror, 
As she blinked her eyes, she could see a large tractor trailer truck quickly approaching. As she blinked her eyes, don't you know that your life can change that fast? As fast as it takes to blink your eyes, your whole world could be turned upside down. As she blinked her eyes again, as the truck showed no sign of slowing down, after the third blink of her eyes, bam! Morgan heard the thunderous crashing as the truck rammed into the rear of her car. The momentum of the truck began pushing Morgan's car further and further away. She could see the Jersey wall and the water below. Her mind was frantically racing with thoughts and prayers for her car to stop on the bridge. People don't go over this bridge into the water, she thought. Morgan felt helpless, and she reasoned in her mind, this is it, I'm going to die. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere. There was no way of escape. Morgan's car was jerked like a roller coaster. Her greatest fear soon became a reality. After being pushed along on the top of the barrier between the bridge and the water, Morgan's car was now plunging into the treacherous waters below as the car quickly submerged beneath the water's surface, fear and panic gripped Morgan. Her seatbelt was locked and would not open. Her arms were now flailing about and her mouth and body were filling up with water. But Morgan says, watch this, here's your praise, get ready to shout. But Morgan says, I started to feel the drowning sensation. Anybody ever felt that before and you've never been in water? It didn't feel like how it should felt. With that, she felt a rush of hope as she told herself, I'm not going out this way. I'm not dying. I'm not going out this way. I'm not going to die. Then suddenly, suddenly, fortune struck. Morgan says in that moment of defying death, she reached out to God. And she claims God turned her situation around. I just felt as if God touched my shoulder and pushed me back against my car in my seat to relax me. Morgan says that divine intervention allowed her to unlock her seat belt and then pull herself out of the driver's side window, swimming to the surface and then swimming to shore where help arrived. My brothers and sisters, Morgan's story is being told all over the world. It is being described as a modern day miracle. I wonder if miracles have ever been performed in your life. I wonder who in here has ever been a part of a miracle. For your belief was sealed in the inexplicable, not the debatable. Morgan explained that she knows some people don't believe in God. But now she says, they can look at me. They can look at the video of the bridge and my car being pulled from the water. Morgan asks, as long as you have God with you, he will be there to support you through everything, even when you're going over the bridge. There are some who pray, 
I don't want to go over the bridge. There are some who pray, Lord, get me off of the bridge. But don't you know that even when you're going over the bridge, God is right by your side. In this age of cynicism and abandonment of faith, Morgan's story is a dramatic reminder that God is real. Miracles happen every day. They're just not reported. If you doubt it, just take a look in the mirror. Take a look in the mirror. You are a miracle. You are a work of art. You are a masterpiece of God, your creator. My brothers and sisters, when we think about the inexplicable, when we think about miracles, we think about a God who's indefinable. We think about a God who's indescribable. We think about a God who's inexpressible, unsayable, enigmatic, unpenetrable, incomprehensible, inscrutable, mysterious, and unfathomable. We know a God who is unknowable. We know a God who is unreasonable. We know a God who is sound. We know a God who is logical. We know a God who has sense. We know a God who is not peculiar. We know a God who is accomplished. We know a God who is certain, hands down, inarguable, incontestable, inconvertible, indisputable, indubitable, irrefutable, positive, and questionless, and settled and sure, unanswerable and unarguable, unchallengeable and unbeatable, undebatable and undeniable, and for surely unquestionable. For the Bible says in conclusion, for Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both the Jews and the Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of the Lord. For God's foolishness, watch this, for God's foolishness is wiser than the human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than the human strength. Somebody needs to hear today. Somebody needs to shout today. Somebody needs confirmation today that God is stronger than you'll ever be. God is bigger than the biggest person. God is louder than the loudest person. God has shown up and shown out in your life. Oh, the day that you began to believe, the day that you began to believe is the day that God saved you, is the day that God came and grabbed you, is the day that God rescued you, is the day that you should have died but God said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet at this time. For there may be somebody present. There may be somebody present who do, does not know God. There may be somebody present who is seeking a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. Start to tell your story. You will not be convicted to come to Christ, nor will you be convicted to testify to Christ 
based on what somebody has told you, based on what somebody has explained to you. Your faith begins when something happens in your life that you cannot explain. Your faith begun long ago when you should have been dead and gone. Your faith began when God performed the miracle in your life. Is there one on today? Is there one on today? In the name of Jesus. Or there may be somebody, there may be somebody, there may be somebody who's looking to rededicate. There may be somebody who wants to give their life back to Christ. And then there may be somebody who's wrestling with the call. If you fit into one of these categories, in the name of Jesus, then today might be your day. Watch this, we're gonna do something different. If you're already saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, have a seat. If you're already a member of New Hope CME Church, have a seat. If you're not struggling with anything at all, then consider yourself blessed in the name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, it is my sincere prayer. It is my sincere prayer that you begin to realize the miracles that have been performed in your life. If a miracle has been if a miracle has been performed in your life, then you have the duty, you have the job to go out and spread the good news. Because that day that God lifted you up off the hospital bed, that day that you avoided that accident, that day that you were able to walk away from that accident, that day that your child was born, that day that you were born, that day when you got that job, that day when you got that new car, these are miracle and wonders to perform. That's when your faith began. That's when your faith returned in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank God and praise God. Give it up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, from whom all blessings flow. Your belief was sealed in the inexplicable, not the debatable. You need to avoid debates. Never enter into foolish arguments and foolish debates, particularly when it comes to Jesus. If somebody wants to debate you on Jesus, just walk away because you know what he's done for you. You don't have to <clears throat> debate it or explain it to anybody. You just walk away and you pray for that individual. <clears throat> One day they'll stop debating the Lord has a way of intervening. The Lord has a way of performing what's called a divine correction. As I gather my final thoughts, might we receive Sister Suzanne Smith right now in the name of Jesus. Encourage her at this time. Encourage her, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On behalf of my mother, who is doing very well, yes, um, we would like to thank you for your prayers and your calls. And for those of you who visited, she is doing extremely well. I saw her early this morning. I had to take something to her. She was sitting up. She had just finished um, therapy, and she was signing on to watch 
Bab, uh, Sunday school. So Hallelujah. she's doing very well. Let's clap it out one more time for Mrs. Betty Smith in the name of Jesus. Um, Children of Praise and Chosen G, you have rehearsal immediately after church. Uh, reminder, change for Tennessee. We need to fill that bottle up by the end of summer. And uh, Bethel of African Methodist Church. We are greet we are we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The deaconess and stewardesses of Bethel AME Church are having their annual worship service on Sunday, April 12th at 4 p.m. You are invited to worship with us as we thank God for yet another year of service to him. Our theme is, Old Things Have Passed Away, All Things Are New, which will be brought, um, the, ser the pastor preaching will be Reverend Phyllis Wideman Pickett, and um, we will be wearing white and ask you that you wear white also. So um, it's really for our stewardesses. If any of us wish to attend, please see Sister Vernell Smith after church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Suzanne. I think she left black and white for me on purpose. Am I right about it? I think she, <laughs> I think she left. Yes, praise the Lord. Everybody say black and white. Black. Everybody say black and white. Black. Say white and black. Black and white, white and black, black and white. Oh, on April 3rd, on April 3rd, in four weeks, if I'm not mistaken, on four weeks, we shall be having our second annual black and white ball in the name of Jesus being held down the street on that Friday, Good Friday, at the Doubletree Hilton, at the Doubletree Hilton in Skokie starting at 6 p.m. sharp, starting at 6 p.m. sharp with the welcoming hour prior to beginning our dinner and welcoming and invocation. But this is a trifle celebration in the name of Jesus, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, celebrating 103 years of ministry, and celebrating and raising funds for the city of Evanston and her annual youth summer employment. Tickets are $60 in advance, $70 at the door. The Holy Spirit told me to make this abundantly clear because I know what's going to happen in the coming days and weeks. Oh, but pastor, I was going to, and pastor, I had planned. No, 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 no. Hear me very clear. Tickets are $60 in advance, $70 at the door. Many people have come to me and told me that they have sold their tables, but yet our first lady of finance has told me she has not received not one thin dime yet. If you have actually sold your tables, start turning in your money now. We need your money turned in now. $60 per person in advance. 70 at the door. 70 that day. Don't delay in the name of Jesus. But we are so excited, and I put on my webpage, if you actually need to see the numbers, go to my Facebook post from last night, and I put the actual numbers from Kevin Brown himself, the director of children and uh, services here in the city of Evanston, and it shows a breakdown of how much money is needed per person, per day, uh, per work event, and that's what we're raising money for. So be there or be square. I'm encouraged by all the tables that are selling out all over the place. Thank you for that. By way of a few announcements, I have multiple in front of me that were not given to Suzanne in the name of Jesus quickly because I cut my sermon short so you got the time. Praise the Lord. The annual King and Queen raffle, Saturday, March 14th for the unit Church Ushers League, the state of Illinois. In the name of Jesus, see me or see Bryant for tickets for that to support our ushers. There is a district reporting meeting for the CME Church Spring Convocation, con convocation March 21st coming up rather rapidly in Freedom. 
Shreveport, Illinois, in the name of Jesus. I'll send you more information about that in communion service and youth and worship. There is a usher uh, uh, event that I just received. Uh, uh, the senior and junior usher board of Second Baptist is having their annual day on Sunday, March 15th, next Sunday at 3.30. Go support our local ushers at Second Baptist. On today, the Spelman College Glee Club concert is at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock at Unity on the North Shore. Unity on the North Shore, 3434 Central Street, Evanston, Illinois. 3434 Central Street in Evanston, Illinois. I have flyers. I've heard them in concert before, and you will be blessed. You would be blessed to hear the Spelman College Glee Club Concert Choir. And then we have multiple traveling dates coming up for both me and others. <clears throat> In chronological order, March 25th, we are traveling to Allen Temple, Allen Temple, Allen Chapel in Gary, Indiana, Wednesday night, March 25th. On Saturday, March 28th, our very own Sister Wanda Taylor. Give it up for Sister Wanda Taylor. She will be the keynote speaker at the annual lay ministry of the Chicago District in Burbank, Illinois. See her for information and ticket information. In the name of Jesus, let's support her. In April, we have three traveling dates. April 1st, we're traveling to First Church. We're traveling to First Church on Wednesday, April 1st, I believe, at 7 o'clock. Then on April 12th, uh, uh, Alva will remind me of the church. Alva will remind me of the church on April 12th. St. Peter's here in Evanston, Illinois. On, on a Sunday afternoon at 3.34 o'clock, we are traveling to St. Peter's around the corner down the street. We are traveling. And then we have a speaking engagement set up with uh, 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 New Beginnings Church. Time and date, TBD. So New Hope, we are on the move. New Hope, we are rather busy. New Hope, we have a purpose in this community. New Hope, we are doing the work of the Lord. Are all hearts and minds settled in the name of Jesus? If that is so, then let us stand now for our doxology and our benediction. Hallelujah. It is my prayer to God for you that the Lord will bless you, that the Lord will keep you, that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you, that the Lord will lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace, peace that reaches beyond all understanding. Let the entire church say. Amen.